It is January 2022, and Hilti has come out with a new software update for the PLC Total Station tablet that I want to review today. I want to review the new features that I found to be extremely helpful for my projects. I will make sure to leave timestamps at the bottom and chapters throughout the video so it's easy to navigate if you need to skip and find the thing you want to look for. The first thing is if you go to your settings gear, you will notice that under the system info tab, the newest software is 4.2. 4.2 is the new software for January in 2022. So if you're watching this video and you're not on 4.2 yet, you'll need to get it updated so you can see what I'm seeing. And staying right in this section, I want to show you the first new addition to the software that will be able to be used going forward. Hilti has made it a lot easier to check for updates. All you need to do is go to your system info tab in settings and right here you'll see it says check for update and when you click on it, it will simply tell you whether or not your software is the most recent and most up to date version on the server. So now it's easy to find and easy to always check for updates at your own leisure. The second thing I'd like to show you is the enhancements that have been made to stationing. The stationing process remains the same, but the information that you get out of stationing has improved and will improve as more updates come out. To show you first, if I go into layout, you will see a few things, but first of all, you'll notice that the stationing icon is no longer a diamond. It actually is the tool that you are currently connected to. And you can see I'm connected to the POS 180. So that is the icon that you see here. If you're connected to a different Tilty tool, like the PLT 300, for instance, you'll see that icon. So now it's a lot more visually appealing to find where your unit stationed so that you can see it visually on your plan as well. The second thing that you've probably noticed is this dotted purple line. This dotted purple line indicates which way the tool is looking on your job site. And you can see that it goes on for infinity. It's simply going to be an indicator to let you know which way the tool is turned on your job site for you to easily figure out how to get it turned back to you or turn to the location you needed to go. This purple line indicating the tool orientation will be visible whether you're in a measuring mode such as myself here in layout or in a simple draw or different view mode you'll notice that line stays consistent to turn this line in off you simply go to settings you go to your screen view and you simply toggle tool orientation right here on and off if i turn it off you'll notice that that purple line is now gone and lastly one of the coolest features that i've noticed that they've added to the stationing options here on the tablet are under the draw menu. If you swipe down, you'll notice that there is a new option down at the bottom called reports. If you click on this, it's going to invite you to save an Excel file somewhere on your tablet, your choice, that's going to be a stationing report. So once you save it, you can then open it and I'll show you what that looks like now. The Hilti station report is going to show you all the different stationings that you've completed on the particular project that you made the report for. So in this case, I have seven different stationings with each stationing's northern, eastern, and height coordinate at the time that I stationed it, the location that the total station found itself. And over here on the right, it has the date and the time that that stationing was completed. Now, what you'll notice is that there is a blank space in here for the deviations of your stationing. What this indicates to me is that this is to come in the future Right now, the deviation information is only available when you station on the tablet itself, but in future releases of the software, that information will soon be saved to this Excel file as well, so you can review your deviations going forward in this report. So for now, if you are concerned about your deviations, uh, I encourage you to take screenshots or pictures as you are doing the stationing process to remind yourself what your deviations were, but soon they will be saved in this report as well in a future update. Furthermore, you'll notice down here at the bottom that you have further details of the stationing and for the stations that uh, you measure control points with, which is almost all of them, you will have a the number of control points you measured with the prism type that you used to measure it, the height of rod at the time, the parts per million that you had at the time. A lot of information is going to be available to you for each and every stationing. So to recap, you have your overall stationings for the entire project and then information about the control points you use specifically underneath each stationing. The major advantage of having a station report is simply because you can document and track your accuracy. Total stations are designed to give you documentation 
going forward throughout the life of the project and how nice it is to have a constant Excel file being prepared in the background of the software so that you can always track the accuracy of your stationings and perhaps even see where your stationings might have gone wrong so that you can fix mistakes early and fast. The next part of the update that follows stationing is layout. When you go into layout, there is now an additional way to read these arrows as you lay out. In my current view, the tool is guiding me based on me looking at the tool. It's telling me how to move to get to my point, assuming that I am looking at the tool as I'm finding my point. If I want to find this point, I simply need to follow these arrows 11 inches to the right and 10 and a half inches south, and I'll find my point that I'm looking for. Right now, I am oriented towards the tool, which is located up here, just above me. There's a new way of having these arrows be displayed. If you go to settings and you go to your screen view and settings and you turn on plan north located right here under layout, you'll notice two things. First thing, the plan automatically goes into plan north view, which it was happening before on previous updates. However, what is new in plan north view are the arrows. If you notice, these arrows are now guiding you based off of plan north view and plan north view only. So to find that point, if I zoom in, instead of having the tool guide me based on me looking at the tool, it's simply telling me according to plan north, I now need to move north on the plan 11 1 8 and east on the plan 10 and 1 8 to find that point. For some of you, this could be a major game changer, especially when you are used to laying out on a job site where you know where Plan North is in the actual field and it's easy for you to orient yourself to Plan North view as you lay out. Now you have an option to read the deviations on the total station in relation to Plan North view as well. And you don't have to feel like you always need to look back at the total station as you lay out. You can orient yourself to your preference. The next two features I want to review are some additional drawing features and you can access these by going to the middle application window and under the point creation function you have the ability to create a point at what they call an apparent intersection. If I click on this, this is just as it sounds like, you can click on one line and then on another line and the apparent intersection of those two lines will appear as a point. Once the point's been created you can press the check mark and it will save. Some things to be aware of is when you are using this feature the lines that you are using do have to be at the same elevation. If this line was at an elevation higher than this line there would not be an apparent intersection and therefore the point would not be created. So if you're having trouble with this it might be because the lines that you're selecting are not at the same height or the same slope. And the second thing to be aware of is if you're using this feature as of now, this might change in the future, but if I click on two lines that do indeed already intersect, it will not create a point. So if you are creating points at already intersecting lines, go ahead and use the other normal point creation feature for intersecting lines as before. This, as of now, is only for lines that do not currently intersect. To show you another application, what I've done here is I have an as-built or a measured and recorded image of a warehouse that I measured. And if I go to my orbit view, you'll notice that there's a lot of 3D elements in here of these points. When I zoom in, you'll notice that I have these two walls measured, a wall here and a wall here. But I want to be able to get an accurate reading of where the corners meet. And that was a little bit difficult to measure with the laser because I wasn't sure if I was hitting the exact corner. So what I can do to find that corner point is I can take this wall that I did measure in and this wall that I measured in and simply extend the intersections. One thing to be aware of is that I do need to make sure that these lines are indeed at the same elevation before I do so. So what I'm going to do is simply make sure that these measured points and the measured points of the second wall are on the same elevation, create the line, and then make the intersection. And I'll do that now to show you how that would look. First, I'm going to go to my point menu. I'm going to select the points that I want to work with, and I'm simply going to quickly convert those to a layout point so that I can edit them and work with them. And now I will select those points again as layout points press the edit icon at the top and simply put them all at the exact same height coordinate of zero just to keep it easy. And now that those wall points are all at the same exact level, I deleted the lines that were there before and I'll just redraw them in and get the apparent intersection. Now that I'm on apparent intersection, I just tap those two lines I made 
that are all at elevation of zero. And now I can see my corner point of those walls and save it. And I know that LP3, that location, is my corner point of my job. In the past, getting this value was a little bit more difficult, and now it's a lot more straightforward to find the exact coordinate location of a corner by using this method. The next feature I want to show you that came out is the ability to draw a point at the center of a square. And to show you how this would work, here I have a anchor bolt drawing, and if I need to for some reason get the center of this square and these red lines are for whatever reason not available, I can simply select the three lines that are perpendicular to each other. And after selecting them, you'll notice it puts a point at the center of that square. Now, just like with the parent intersections, these lines do need to be at the same elevation. Two of the lines must be parallel. One of them must be per perpendicular. But this is a very strong feature for electrical boxes, laying out shower tubs and drains and things like that. And for whatever reason, instead of getting a circle in the CAD file, you get a square. Now you have an option to put a point at the center of a square. Another feature that's been added is also in this draw menu. If you swipe down, you'll notice they've added the dimension feature. It's down here in the COGO, which is coordinate geometry. It's a measurement feature that they've added. This dimension feature is basically going to show you visually the dimension of a line that you select. This is only for lines, but if I click on a line and I press check, it'll automatically show me the dimension of that line. So I know that that line there is 12 feet long. You can also select multiple lines at once and press check to see the dimensions of all of them at once as well. And all the previous ones you've selected will remain visible as you do this. Now, one thing to recognize is that if you have dimensions turned on as you're doing this. If you switch projects and come back into this project, you'll need to go ahead and dimensionalize your project again to see these visually. These dimensions will disappear if you do exit and switch projects. In addition, another thing to be aware of is you can also toggle the ability to, to see your dimensions while you are in layout mode by going to your settings gear, going to screen view and settings, and simply indicating whether or not you want the dimensions on or off. If you need to see the dimensions of your lines while you're laying out, this is a fantastic feature for you. And the final feature that came out that I want to showcase is under the view settings. If you are working with 3D files, you can swipe down from the view settings and you'll notice these different shading options that let you visualize your 3D image a little bit better as you work. Please keep in mind that the shading, while it's nice to use when you're in 3D mode or drawing on your elements, immediately when you go into layout mode to do your measurements, it's going to default to top-down view. Just be aware of that. It's going to be in top-down view when you lay out, but you can definitely visualize your shading while you're drawing. So I'll go ahead and select on this icon here to see what it looks like. And you can see it's adding shading to my 3D elements for me. So use this as you prefer as you add points, lines, and dimensions. If there's any questions, please leave them in the comments.